Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this webinar presented through Outback Power and IMO on rapid shutdown system presented from IMO. My name is Graham Viney. I work for IMO. And what we're going to do is start by considering a typical PV system, which as you see from this graphic is basically a PV array on top of a roof of a building flowing through to a DC isolator, to a DC, uh, DC to AC inverter, through an AC isolator, house distribution unit and metering. What we're looking at here is what historically has been a, a typical installation in any building, and it's adapted for industrial buildings as well, but that was how it used to stand. And of course, as you're aware, a number of times occur where first responders or firefighters have to enter a building in case of incident. And this is what developed from what we consider now as a rapid shutdown system. Basically, it's there to allow these first responders to have safe and easy access to um, any building that has a PV system installed. It was designed basically in response to your US NEC regulation, section 690.12, and although we, it's all been updated recently in 2017, a lot of it was, as a basis, was um, put in place in NEC 2014. And the basic principle was, as you're aware, probably is to reduce the voltage entering the building to such a safe level for after a very limited time, and therefore prevent electrocution upon anybody entering the building through loose cables or loose equipment that might be around. What we consider here is um, IMO's understanding of both uh, NEC 2014 and NEC 2017. And as you can see, there are a number of points that have changed. Predominantly, when, we, when IMO first looked at a rapid shutdown system, we were looking at the NEC 2014 requirement, which allowed for dropping controlled voltages to less than 30 volts with a response time of 10 seconds. And that was within a five foot type array of um, boundary of the array. That now since changed in 2017 and has been more initiated down to a modular based shutdown system where things are now becoming more constrained. And as such, the voltage has got to drop down to less than 30 volts within about a foot from the PV array. And actually inside that array, the constraint now is that most control conductors have to be 80 volts. But what in essence surprised us at one time from the our place at IMO was the response time changing from less than 10 seconds to less than 30 seconds. In essence, this didn't cause us a problem within the IMO system as we'll later discuss as we're going through. But it's just to bear in mind that we're now looking at less than 30 seconds for a shutdown system. Hopefully, this graphic shows what our, as I, what IMO's understanding of both NEC 2014 and NEC 2017 becomes. Initially, in 2014, it meant that any conductor outside what you see as the red area, a 10-foot parameter uh, boundary of the array, had to drop below this 30 volt in less 10 seconds or less and within a building that was within a five foot boundary but of course as we highlighted in 2017 this got changed to a one foot boundary from the array and as such what we're now looking at is what you see there any conductor outside the array boundary has to drop to less than 30 volts in 30 seconds and anything within that green boundary has got to generally be between less than 80 volts in operation so this enabled us to consider further what our Fire Raptor, the IMO Fire Raptor rapid shutdown system did and meant that any constraints that were in the 10 foot boundary then become a lot narrower within the one foot boundary. And what you see in the next graphic is how the IMO Fire Raptor is actually installed to fulfill the requirements of having um, a situation where the rain boundary is so small, the Fire Raptor is actually mounted behind uh, the a pair of panels. We'll come on to the situation short later in the presentation about having a pair of panels. 
uh, and where the fire wraps are actually fit. But this gives a simplest, simplistic um, presentation of what we're trying to envisage within the IMO rapid shutdown system. The IMO rapid shutdown system basically consists of two main modules. One is an emergency shutdown switch, an initiator that will actually create the, the manual shutdown of the Fire Raptor system, which as you see on the right hand side. You also see on the left hand side what is effectively the IMO rapid shutdown box that you fit behind the panels. In the bottom middle of this presentation, we also show a cable. Now this cable is done because we offer it as a facility, because as we come to speak about the rapid shutdown, you have to connect to the first fire raptor. And we're we'll, we'll coming to this in more detail as we um, investigate the product we offer you through Outback. The key features of our rapid shutdown system is mainly that although we're looking from this increase from 10 seconds to 30 seconds on from net 2014 to 2017, IMO's shutdown system actually shuts down to naught volts within a second. It enables us to create this shutdown via an AC cutoff, that be that a local cutoff in the area by the first responders or by the initiation of our uh, rapid shutdown switch or via the fire raptor sensing a temperature rise within its local area because within the IMO fire raptor system it has onboard temperature sensors. Currently we've found any installation where this has been used that is compatible with all string inverters. Um, the reason being is this is a standalone unit. It's a bit like what we term an old fashioned plug and play type unit, which is often associated with computer systems, that there is no communication between the inverter and the rapid shutdown system. It is totally a self contained unit. The options within our system from IMO also enable us to consider hardware or mobile communications and alarm signaling option. And we'll come to discuss that a bit more as I talk about the operation of the product. And because it is a totally modular system or self-contained, the product is suitable for both new installations or can be retrofitted with minimal effort. As you can see from the bottom of the product, the IMO rapid shutdown system is a UL approved product for both the US and Canada. And it's also been passed for FCC um, uh, emissions testing as well. And in our idea behind it is deemed suitable for both NEC 2014 installations and the later NEC 2017 installations. As I said, we're, we're compliant with both as far as we're aware. Um, the only caveat we say to that is where we are considering the Fire Raptor being used for a two panel installation. If your panels are greater than 40 volt modular voltages, then you have to consider one fire raptor per panel. And again, a lot of this will come clearer as we go through the presentation and we discuss the operation of the product. It is independent of the inverter or charging system. As I said in the previous slide, it's a totally self-contained unit. And as such, we're not dependent upon any external um, influences with our product. Again, you see from my one of my previous earlier slides, the emergency switch actuator. This can be used in conjunction with just an emergency switch in any multi room or floor situation, such that you could have cutoffs for your PV system on multiple locations. Even though you have one control unit, you can have multiple switches around your building. And this wiring optional, I've indicated the FRS SIG CAB 1.8 is to enable you to um, facilitate wiring to the first fire raptor. Basically, this has a suitably environmentally sealed connector on that mates with its, uh, the male part of the first fire raptor. And what you see when we discuss this further is each fire raptor effectively daisy chains onto itself. The power supply into the first one links to the second one, the second one links to the third one, and et cetera, et cetera, creating a chain. But often to facilitate ease of installation, 
we decided to offer this cable as an, a, a, as an additional optional extra because sometimes when wiring is put in, we can't always guarantee the building size or anything else. So this is effectively a 1.8 meter uh, flying lead with the connector, which you then wire into a junction box after um, installing your Fire Raptor system and emergency switch system in the location you need to and running a suitable two core cable from that switch unit to a junction box. What we'll see here is the main emergency switch unit. Um, it's provided in an IP or NEMA rated enclosure. It's easy to install and mount. It has a wide operating voltage range of 90 to 264 volts. So although we're based in the European area, it, has, it is more than suitable for use on your main supply of 110, 120 volts in the US. Within, within the product, it has a minimal current rating, as you see there, about 200 milliamps. And the product you see on the picture on the right hand side is our entry level product, the FRS ESW1. It has an, a typical twist to release emergency push button switch, which upon operation, you just push the switch, disengages the power from the fire raptors, and therefore will shut the fire raptors down. And this, as I said, this will come more clear as we go through the presentation. To assist in wiring, we offer pre-threaded gland cables, and we actually supply the glands in these. And although you can't see it, the glands are on the underside of that enclosure, enabling cables to come in from the bottom and be wired appropriately into the necessary areas within the product. Although what we do say is you have to be ensure that the connections are made in accordance with any local regulations, whether it be the US, Canada, or any state regulations that might be around at that time. As I said, the picture you see is actually of our entry level product with an emergency push button switch. This, as I said, is a twist release. So once engaged, if you want to repower things, you have to twist the, the button to release it. We can also offer a key release option. This gives you a facility that once the uh, push button, emergency push button is pressed, it then requires intervention with a key holder to be able to release it. And sometimes this will be deemed more suitable on bigger installations where you're trying to get over maybe tampering or spurious uh, people playing around with the push button switch or even children or stuff in, in uh, installation. Within the product is a class two power supply. It basically takes the mains input from what you see there would be your right hand side of your enclosure. It gives you a 24 volt output, which then goes through your push button switch, which is your initiator. And it then goes through to a set of DIN terminals, um, which enable ease of connectivity for installation of the product. Within this device, we, as I said previously, we supply the cable glands, as you can see from above, these are supplied. We also supply a water resistant end stop. This is because when you install a fire raptor system, you end up with a chain of these red boxes. And at the end of it, you'll have a flying lead that will be unsealed to the environment. So of course you actually want to seal that to make it water resistant. This typical example you see there is an FRS01, which will actually power up to 40 panels, and because of its size, be quite easily locatable. What you hear, see now here is probably a rep graphic representation of what's inside that box. As I tried to indicate, we have actually two versions of this power supply. This version on the left-hand side of the two graphics shows your AC mains coming in to your life and neutral to your class two power supply. It shows your naught volts to an LED indicator and to a DIN terminal, but also your 24 volts come through the red lead through a normally open switch through to a DIN terminal. This 24 volts on the right hand side is where we can connect to your first fire raptor. And as I said, what you would do for a typical installation is you will put a set of twin core cable in here to a local area junction box, which you would then connect to our signal cable 1.8 to
to connect to your first fire raptor. This gives you the flexibility of um, not limiting the distance between the mounting of the ESW and where your installation of your um, rapid shutdown system is for your, your PV modules. Because it could be 10 meters, it could be 20 meters, it could be 30 meters or even greater. The installation is such that here you would put your, the two DIN terminals, you would put your two cables, and let's say run them to a junction box. We also have an FRS ESW2. Um, this again will become clear as we go through the product range, but the only difference you'll see here is we have an inline fuse holder. This inline fuse holder is there specifically for two modules of our product, an FRS02 and FRS04. And it's part of a safety cutout for um, disconnecting the string. On the fire raptor, you'll also see an LED. This LED is mounted into the 24 volt line and it represents that 24 volts is being supplied by the product and will be coming out of the um, boxes you see in front of you. What you then have to consider is 24 volts getting to the fire raptor system. But what you're here, seeing here is just a confidence factor that that is what is actually being generated and the product is actually working. What we're going to discuss now is actually the fire raptor. That's what you see in front of you. It's basically a UL1741 approved product for rapid shutdown. And in line with UL1741, we have a key slot mounting. This is important such that if your screws of mounting the product become loose, then this will mean the fire raptor does not fall off your mounting as a typical slot product would. If this was open up and it was a slot, then if the screws loosened, it could easily drop down and be put more strain on the cables. The picture you see in front of you is not 100% a representation of the product because what we show here for ease of clarify, clarification are two blue cables. These two blue cables are actually your 24 volt DC supply to your fire raptor, and they will take the power from your ESW unit into the fire raptor and effectively create a daisy chain between subsequent fire raptors in your string installation. The black cables you see in front of you are, of course, the PV cables. You have two short ones in the middle. These are kept short because they're meant to connect directly to the back of the modules. And in line with NET 2017, we are trying to keep the, all the higher voltages very close to the fire app, uh, to the modules, such that on any sort of emergency, then this is the constraining part. So where you're looking for NET 2017 and only allowing a one foot boundary, these short cables mean that if you mount the fire raptor appropriately, the, the one foot boundary is fulfilled within this design. The two longer cables are of course your PV out. They're the ones that are gonna to go to your string, to your DC isolator, to your inverter. And of course they can be much longer because once upon initiation of a rapid shutdown, it is within this red box that the voltage drops to 0 volts. So although you'll have PV, uh, 40, 50, 60 volts coming into your main two connectors, these longer cables on rapid shutdown will be down at your 0 volts. And as I said earlier, that occurs generally within about one second. If we consider the technical specification of the Fire Raptor, the product is a fully enclosed device. Um, effectively, it is NEMA 4X, or in the European Union, we call it an IP rating. By being fully enclosed in NEMA 4X, it gives us a much, and also, of course, UR94V0 rating for the plastics, it gives us an extremely flexible mounting solution. Effectively, the Fire Raptor can be mounted in any orientation, in any position, at any angle. There is, it is a completely solid state solution. And unlike possible um, rapid shutdown systems that use electromechanical um, devices, what you find is by being a solid state, there is no orientation issues at all. Whereas if you're looking maybe at a product with a relay, then you have to consider sometimes exactly in what orientation that relay is mounted. So it doesn't give you such flexibility. As, <clears throat> sorry. As I said, we use a super sealed Tyco connector. 
Um, we, we supply the flying lead for you. And of course, the ceiling gland at the end of the installation, which I'll cover in a, a slide shortly. The main PV panel connectors, both short and long, work on the multi-contact MC4 connector, which we deem as a major uh, component within the PV panel industry. There is flexibility on quantities to use other connectors, but we've, we've standardized on this because of the market. Uh, we're addressing at the moment. The Fire Raptor, the red box you see, I saw earlier, has a maximum system power of 700 watts. And as such, this gives us a situation where you're allowed 350 watts per panel. Again, you're looking at a maximum system voltage of 150 volts and a maximum system current of 12 amps. This situation then comes in more in your line where you consider NET 2017, where the requirement now is for 80 volts uh, maximum control voltage. And what you find with the IMO product here is with an overhead of 150, the 80 volts is well within the capability of our product. And again, with the view of um, how stands have changed within the American environment, you're looking now at a system isolation voltage of 1500 volts, which means the fire, IMO Fire Raptor is more than capable of handling any installation a thousand volts and above within those realms. The ambient temperature we specified here is quite a, a, a strange thing to discuss really because of how the operation of the fire raptor works. We talk about the ambient temperature of minus 30 to plus 55 of sort of the typical air temperature but as we'll discuss later the fire raptor system has a method of shutting down that means that it can actually survive in excess of 95 degrees centigrade and all components and the plastics are chosen to survive that level of temperature rise. The 24 volt input, input flexibility is mentioned there because effectively although we run on 24 volts the IMO Fire Raptor system will actually operate at a lesser voltage so if you have cable voltage drops in your installation due to length or poor quality cables, this generally would be not an issue for our system in as much as as long as we're starting at 24 volts, you can have several volts drop and that will not affect the functionality in any way of the Fire Raptor system. As I stated near the beginning, we have a monitoring capability. This is our FRSO2, FRSO4 product, and we'll be discussing those later on uh, within the presentation. And we're so confident within our product range and because of the solid state solution we've offered that we offer the Fire Raptor system with a 20 year warranty for the, the red units. As I've shown in one of the initial graphics, the IMO Fire Raptor is designed to be installed at solar panel level. That is effectively behind the panels and in close proximity to them. And uh, although we were a bit un unaware of the DEC 2017 changing the voltage from 10 volts to 30 volts on the shutdown, we are very confident that our design might fulfill any future developments of your wiring regulations in as much as we actually did shut down to zero volts upon initiation of the RSS. We're now going to discuss the shutdown system of the RAPID, uh, the IMO Fire Raptor system because we basically have three ways of shutting down. The manual operation is, the, as you've seen, the push button emergency stop switch situation. If you press that, that disconnects the 24 volt supply from the Fire Raptor installation, therefore causing each of the red boxes to shut down. They all happen generally within less than a second. Again, this can be vary depending upon the length of the installation. But it, by pushing that red push button, we actually create a manual shutdown. We also have an AC automatic supply cutoff. Because of the design of our ESW boxes, any disconnection of the external AC supply, whether it be at domestic level, distribution board level, or by the first responders or emergency services shutting down an area of Fire Raptor systems, then that will also shut the AC off to our ESW units consequently shutting off the DC and causing the fire raptor systems to shut themselves down 
and disconnect the PV panels from your string. The IMO Fire Raptor also has a temperature sensor internally within it. It basically, this shuts down at two temperatures, which we'll discuss shortly, but effectively what you have is an onboard sensor in close proximity to your panels, detecting an increase in the ambient temperature rise above our trigger point levels that are programmed into the system. There are two shut, Fire Raptor shutdown versions available. The first one is our FRSO1 and 3 units. Again, this is one of the units that has two shutdown points. Firstly, if it sees an ambient temperature rise of 85 degrees C, and I'm talking about the temperature sensor seeing that, that temperature rising and that sensor is internal to the product, then it will cause what I would term a soft shutdown. Now, even to increase to 85 degrees C within the Fire Raptor product, the external temperature of the Fire Raptor must be in excess of that. So we're looking at quite a high temperature, <coughs> sorry, quite a high temperature environment at the moment. But the situation with the 85 degrees C is that if the external temperature then reduces below this level, the fire actor will then restart itself. That's why we're coming to the second paragraph. Again, if the temperature continues to rise because of a fire, then of course you're exceeding even greater temperatures. In this instance, 92 is our second trigger point. And effectively hitting this temperature, the whole fire raptor system unit will shut itself down and it needs manual intervention then to reset it by cycling the 24 volt supply through the emergency switch. Again, just to repeat, if at 85 degrees C temperature, the fire raptor will restart itself if it cools down. If at 92, it requires a manual intervention to reset. We have a second set of units, the FRSO2 and 4. This only has one shutdown temperature, and that's at 92 degrees C. This is because of the functionality product of the product. And again, hitting the 92 degrees C, it requires resetting by the installer or any engineer looking at it to assess that uh, nothing has been damaged and is suitable for restarting. Uh, <coughs> and that involves just like the FRS 01 and 03, the recycling of the 24 volt supply. The situation with the FRS 02 and 4 is it, it actually supplies a signal back to our ESW units that can be used for connection to the alarms central system or via SMS if you want to look at considering that sort of option. The situation is, as I showed you in a previous slide, in an ESW2 enclosure, we had that inline fuse holder. In there is a fuse that is rated as per the installation. And what happens is when the temperature of the FRSO2 or 4 rises to above 92, it, there is a short circuit, little short circuit protection device within the Fire Raptor red, each red box that shorts out the 0 and 24 volt supply rails, thereby causing the fuse to blow and disconnecting the whole string. The reason behind this is if you are looking at an environment temperature above 92, we're looking at a safety aspect here and want to try and give as much warning to people and make the system as safe. So we're looking at shutting the whole string down. What we're saying here is it can be used as an alarm signaling system or via SMS emails to notify any users of the situation. But here, what you're using is there's 24 volts or lack of 24 volts on shutdown as an IO to your system. So you could set the 24 volt line from our ESW1 into your building management system. And while there's 24 volts there, you can consider that the Fire Raptor system is up and running and operational. On loss of the 24 volts, you are now considering the Fire Raptor system has shut itself down, and therefore you need to notify somebody or someone about this these circumstances. <coughs> what we're looking here is a typical graphic situation of what a Fire Raptor is looking at. We recommend later, and we'll cover this in a subsequent slide, that the Fire Raptor is mounted close to the PV panel. That's what this blue panel represents. Here you have, in the green dotted line, the temperature trip point that's set within the Fire Raptor system. 
you have the fire raptor status showing he's on with the blue line and of course the red is indicating the temperature rise as we go further in time and maybe a fire or any heat source gets more intense of course the, the, the panel will increase in temperature and although the fire raptor is currently working here because it hasn't reached its trip point trip point you can actually see it is approaching the trip point as we continue in time that temperature continues to rise the temperature passes the fire raptor trip point and this graphic is supposed to represent the fire raptor shutting itself down at its uh, trip temperature this one we've shown at circa 85 degrees c 185 fahrenheit because that's the first trip point of the fire raptor design particularly frs01 and frs03 so it should the temperature hit this point and then cool down of course after a time the fire raptor will come back onto its on status if the temperature continues to rise as i said with the 92 degree shutdown point the temperature will, the fire raptor will then need manual intervention to reset itself so it gives you a effectively a warning of the severity of the product The fire raptor system is particularly useful and is mainly designed for a first responders shutdown system, but also to, in case of fire, to disconnect all that PV system. One of the questions raised when we did this was because of the design, what happens if the fire takes hold of the fire raptor system? And what we commissioned was TUV in Germany to carry out a test that show that if a fire raptor is activated and shut down even though the temperature with a flame increases above 700 degrees c to the eventual destruction unit they it was confirmed that the fire raptor remained in its off state thereby disconnecting the pv module voltages from the output of the fire raptor and the string or dc isolator or inverter what we're going to show you here is a few pictures of that uh, situation that test here you see a fire raptor there's a flame burner below it and of course this is applied over a length of time and the fire raptor is applied to this effective heat which would simulate a fire in this local area and it eventually burns and what you find is the onboard temperature sensor then causes the fire raptor to shut down to ensure that as i said it never continues to power itself up we continue with the burning test and unfortunately as you see as the the fire raptor burns more and the environment burns more you get more smoke in the area but what eventually transpired was at the end of the test this gives a representation of what the fire raptor looks like a completely burnt unit fully charred fully disfigured but during this whole test once the fire raptor had shut itself down it did not restart and therefore the PV module supply was permanently disconnected from the PV to your panels, to, sorry, to your inverter. We're going to quickly consider now the operation of the module mod, models we supply. In this instance, we're looking at an FRS0102 product. And what you see here is they are connected in series. The way the fire actor works is very similar to a battery and a torch, in as much as you connect your positive and negative of your panels together, and then you take your negative to the negative of the fire raptor, your positive to the positive of the fire raptor, and the output string, both positive and negative here, goes on to your next fire raptor in the system. But effectively, it is a series connection. And although this is exploded slightly, this fire raptor unit will probably be underneath these two panels. We've just pulled them apart to make the, the graphic more easily understood. Of course, when you're starting to put this in a system, as I said, it's a bit like a battery. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. This shows a typical example where you have three sets of systems. Three is just the example we've used here of series connections so you see each one of these has a series connection in it what you end up doing therefore is the fire raptor outputs you daisy chain across positive to negative negative to positive all the way through 
and eventually you end up with a positive rail and a negative rail going to your string inverter. What we come here is a graphical representation. This is this ESW product. This end cable available to order is that uh, FRS SIG CAB 1.8 uh, cable area to go to the first fire raptor. And as I indicated at the beginning, what you end up doing is daisy chaining all your fire raptors together on your 24 volt line. But of course, you'll end up with one at the end with no connector. This is where within the ESW box, we supply the water resistant end stock you build up and put into this uh, end cable to environmentally seal it and therefore prevent tampering, shorting or weather ingress. With this environment within NEC 2017, because we're putting two panels in series and you have to look at control voltages less than 80 volts, you're limited in panel voltage of 40 volts. Should you have to go above 40 volts, then what we consider then is maybe putting one fire raptor per panel. We do have another option, which I'll just come on to shortly. But before we come on to that, just like to highlight the FRSO2 version, which is exactly the same functionality as the FRSO1 in its 85 and 92 degree shutdown, but has that functionality to short and blow the fuse, giving us an IO signal of 24 volts to either mobile communication network or a building management system. <clears throat> we also offer an option of an FRS 03 and 04 system. In this situation, you'll see we still have two panels, but unlike the previous slide where we showed them connected in series, these are connected in parallel. The positives, two sets of positives into the fire actor, two sets of negatives into the fire actor. This means that when you're doing this, you can actually have slightly higher voltage panels connected in parallel. And again, like the previous installation with the series connection, what you have is your IO, your sorry, your inverter output on positive and negative. This now shows you a typical example of a, again a six panel installation with these parallel connections. What you see is just smaller versions of that previous slide where you have a parallel set of panels, another parallel set of panels, and another a third set of parallel panels. And like on the FRS0102, you again positive to negative, positive to negative, like a battery system, and you end up with a positive rail and a negative rail going to your inverter system or DC isolator in the system. Because you're now looking at parallel panels and the voltage range of the fire raptor is up to 150 volts, you can actually put these 80 volt, up to 80 volt panels in parallel. The thing to bear in mind though, as if you refer back to the technical specification of the fire raptor, we've got 700 watts rating for our box. That means in this situation, with two panels together, if we consider 70 volt panels, you've got maybe for 700 watts, 10 amps. And of course, with two panels, you're dividing that by two, giving you a maximum amperage of your panel of about five amps. As I said, the Fire Raptor doesn't have to be connected two, per, two panels per. You can use individual Fire Raptors, so one per panel, which would vastly increase the specification of your system and enable you to run 80 volt panels with much higher currents up to the 700 watt level of each fire actor. What we consider here is the installation. As I indicated earlier, we use a solid state solution and with the NEMA 4X, we have uh, ability to mount in any orientation we deem necessary for your installation. All we say is within the array boundary for 2017, this fire wrap has to be mounted within one foot. And that's what we try and facilitate by having the two shorter cables that have to be connected to the back of the module. What you see is two mounting options here. The option on the left, option one, is very easy to implement. Easy, just screw it to a rail, let the fire wrap to hang down there and connect. Mounting two, though, is probably where we more recommend the unit. You have your solar panel, you have your fire raptor. And the reason we put these in close proximity is that we go back to our temperature sensor functionality. You have a temperature sensor probably mounted about here within the fire raptor. And therefore, 
the closer proximity you have to the solar panel, the more accurate that is going to read the temperature of the solar panel. If you hang it down in an environment, it's more open to any other external influences. But of course, it will also function with its onboard temperature sensor, allowing it to trip at the set volt uh, temperatures we, we've indicated earlier. The Fire Apps is quite an easy product to view, as you saw from previous one. Uh, slides, it is literally a red box with six cables. We basically have an in and out for our power. The two middle cables, which are the shorter cables, which I mentioned, are for the connection to the PV modules. And you have your string cables coming out, which are the longer 1.8 meter cables. Again, we just highlight back here the flexibility of us offering, offering the optional signal cable. This enables you the flexibility of not worrying if you have Tyco Super Seal connectors in your um, vans when you come to install it, but it enables you to just create a junction box, we supply the cable, and you connect it into the local area of the first Fire Raptor line. I'd like to thank you for your time here and open up to any questions that people may have. If there are further questions you think of as we go through this, then please feel free to email um, Outback and they will liaise with ourselves or you can email my IMO directly and we will try and answer our questions. But with Outback's support within the US and our partnership with this product, they have a vast amount of knowledge on its application and will be in a great position to offer local, um, local feedback for you and they will liaise with us should we need any further details. So once again, just thank you on behalf of IMO and Outback Power, and I open it up to any questions that is available.